everyone, welcome to this new series of evaluating AI agent. So if you ever build an AI agent and thought, okay, it answered a few prompts, so it must work correctly. However, although getting a reasonable response is easy, the real challenge is proving your agent works when a user throws a very messy, multi-step, real-world request at it. And in that case, a single pass or fail test is not enough. So in this video series of agent evaluation, we will explore why traditional way of testing fails for AI agents and what agent evaluation really means. We will also cover what to evaluate in agents. We need to evaluate from reasoning and tools to memory and safety. And lastly, in this series, we will cover how to design and run real tests with Google Agent Development Kit. Use three-tier testing pyramids to structure your evaluation. And today's video is the very first episode. And by the end of today's video, you will understand what you really need to measure to know if this agent is doing its job. And you will also see a real-life example of a multi-agent evaluation challenge. All right, let's get started. And the first part of this video is why evaluation is different for agents. You know, traditional software is deterministic. With same input, you almost always get the same output. And that is why unit tests and integration tests work so well. We have this clear pass or fail rules and predictable behavior. But AI agents are probabilistic and autonomous. You know, agents, they plan, adapt, use tools, and can make different valid decisions each run. So with the same prompt, two runs might take completely different path. So agent may fail to achieve what you expect in different ways. For example, agents may choose in the wrong tool, they may lose the important context, or they may time out half way. So if you only check did the final answer equal x, you may miss everything that happened in between. So evaluation for agents, you have to watch this whole journey, including how the plan formed, how the tool were used, how the information were passed, and whether the user really got what they needed. And the second part of today's video is to explain what agent evaluation really means. So agent evaluation isn't just testing this model. It is a whole stack that includes the LM brain, the prompts that's guiding it, the external tools and APIs, the memory system carrying the information forward, and also the orchestration logic trying it all together. So when we evaluate the agent, we are asking, did this Intel system, including planning, tool use, memory, reasoning, reliably achieve its goal. And that is what we call system level testing. It is not just checking one single string. Here is a full stack checklist to keep in mind when it comes to system level testing. And the first thing you need to check is the final output. You need to check, did it actually finish the job? We can check task success rate, stepwise progress, output quality, including coherence, accuracy, clarity, and of course, safety, including bias and prompt injection defense. And the second thing you need to check is planning and reasoning. So how did this model think? How does the model break down this complex goals logically? Or how does it justify each step sensibly and stay coherent over this long multi turn task? And the third thing you need to check is the tool use. You need to check, can it use the tool effectively, whether the model picking the right tool, and whether it passed the correct parameter and handle the outputs. Also, whether it's avoid the redundant costs, keep the latency and cost reasonable. And lastly, is memory and context. You need to check whether the agent re remember what really matters. Does it retrieve past information accurately? and handle this long-range context and conflicts. You know, for example, for RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, we need to check this context for precision and recall. So when evaluating the agent, 
A bad answer might come from a tool issue or a reasoning gap or a memory failure. So it is very important to measure each layer to help you debug. So now we have covered why agent evaluation is different and what to evaluate. The last part of today's video is an example of multi-agent evaluation. And let's look at this example. As you can see from the screen, we have these two agents as customer service. So we have this agent one that is doing the customer support frontline. We have this agent B that is to handle the refund and replacement. So when a user says, I bought a smart widget last week, it's not turning on. I like a refund or replacement. So here is what happens behind the scene. Agent A greets the user and then checks the purchase history, confirms the order. But agent A can refund. Its job is to hand off details to agent B. And then agent B processes the refund with its own tools. But here's the trap. You know, when it comes to evaluation, if you test agent A alone for refunding, it may look like 0% success because agent A doesn't do refund. But in reality, agent A succeeds because its job was to hand off the information, not to refund. Now, if agent A passed the wrong order ID to agent B, but agent B succeeds to refund, but the whole system fails because agent A passed the wrong order. And that is why multi-agent evaluation is so challenging. You need to know if the whole network achieved the goal, you need to know the shared contact safely, and also whether the whole system stay efficient with cost and latency. So how to test the whole system? We will show you how to test this challenge in the next episode. We will introduce a test pyramid and give examples on how to evaluate agent with agent development kits. And I'll also show you step-by-step -step on how to design test cases. You can also check the link on the screen for hands-on tutorial on how to write case yourself. Now, to wrap up today's video, we've covered, first of all, why all testing fails for autonomous tool using and multi-agent system. We also cover what agent evaluation really means. It is a four-stack system-level process. We also cover what to measure, including outcomes, reasoning, tools, memory, and safety. So next time, we will get practical, and I will show you how to design and run real tests with Google's ADK using the three-tier testing pyramid to structure your evaluation. And I will see you in next video. Bye.